What is up guys, Elliot Way here, and Numberphile recently released a video called Beautiful Trigonometry, where they showed that if you have dots moving back and forth in this oscillatory pattern, that as you add more and more dots, a pattern starts to emerge that looks like a spinning wheel inside a bigger wheel. And all these dots are still just moving along a straight line, as you can see. So I wanted to get a better intuition for why this occurs, so I opened up Desmos, and made some little experimental diagrams. And I think I have a pretty intuitive way of thinking about it that I wanna share with you. So here we have the spinning wheel and all the orange dots are following these blue dashed lines. So the question is, why when we rotate a circle inside another circle that's twice its size and diameter, do the points on the edge of the orange circle follow a straight line? And I think it helps if we start with just looking at a single dot. So first of all, since the diameter of the blue circle is twice that of the orange circle, its circumference, which is pi times the diameter, will also be twice as much as the orange circle. So this half arc of the orange circle is gonna be the same length as this quarter arc of the blue circle. So as we come around to there, we'll have traveled the same distance along the orange and along this quarter arc. So it makes sense that this dot will pass through the center and then as we rotate another quarter rotation around, it makes sense that the dot will end up over on this edge. But the question then is, why doesn't it follow an arc or two dips? Why does it follow a straight line? So to understand why that happens, if we look at the rotation of the orange circle, it's spinning clockwise, but its physical position is moving counterclockwise. And if we look at the rate that the circle is spinning, it's gonna do one full revolution at the same rate that it's physically moving in the opposite direction, one full revolution. And if we turn on this green line, which just connects the center of the orange circle to the center of the blue circle, we can really start to see why that effect is occurring. So it's really the fact that the orange circle is rotating in one direction, but its position is rotating in the other direction. And because they're at the same rate, they'll end up canceling out along one dimension, but they'll end up adding together along another dimension. And if we just move the orange circle into the center, it makes it very clear that the two lines are moving at the same rate, but in opposite directions. And if we extend the green line, we can see that this point down here is following the same motion as a cosine function, meaning the distance that this is away from the origin is equal to the cosine of the angle of the rotation. So not only are the points moving in a straight line, but they're moving in a sinusoidal motion. And this might be obvious, but if we look at any other point on the orange circle, it's also gonna follow a straight line. It'll just be at a different angle. So for this point, the orange line and the green line add up along this direction and they cancel out in the direction perpendicular to it. So now let's increase the number of dots. If we have two dots, we get this kind of interesting spinning baton effect. If we go to three dots, it looks like this. And we can see they're all following the same pattern. They're just offset in time and rotation. And notice that each dot on the orange circle is gonna follow an individual path. So the number of lines that there will be are gonna be the number of dots. So if there's three lines, I'll cut it up into six equal sections. So here's four dots, five dots, six dots, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, all the way up to 32. It's starting to get a little janky. So let's go back down to eight. And if we even move the orange circle in so it's not spinning along the edge, but it's a little bit closer towards the center, we'll still see that there are points along these orange spokes which do follow straight lines. They're just not the ones towards the edge of the circle. And we can see the position of where these dots are gonna be is just the part of the spoke that passes through the origin of the blue circle. And if we go back down to a single dot, we'll see that now the edge of the circle is moving in an elliptical path, a clockwise elliptical path, and in between the orange dot and this green dot is another elliptical path, but it's moving the opposite direction. It's moving counterclockwise. So it's kind of this phase transition between a clockwise elliptical path going to a straight line and then a counterclockwise elliptical path all the way until we get to this green dot where it becomes a circle. And in between there, is gonna be a place where the dot will be moving in a straight line. So I hope that gives you a better intuition of why this effect occurs. 
It's really just that the direction that the wheel is rotating is the opposite direction that it's moving. And both of those rotations are at the same rate. So they'll end up canceling each other out in one direction and adding together in a perpendicular direction. All right, that's all for this one. I'll see you guys next time.